absolutely beautiful day outside that the Lord has blessed us with, and uh, we just want to take a moment and welcome you to this time, and uh, just uh, just thank you, thank you for being with us this morning. I've uh, kind of went in the comments there and spoke to everybody, and I uh, just wanted to, to tell you good morning, and, uh, and uh, uh, we already got a great group this morning, I'm seeing around 31 has uh, has joined us. So thank you. And I pray that you stay with us this morning as we come together uh, to read God's Word and to worship God Almighty this morning, wherever you are, wherever you may be. And I just want to say, uh, just want to say thank you once again. I, I want to start, and, 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 and th- this morning we're going to have a, a wonderful time of, of worship together. And if you have your Bibles, I want to go ahead and encourage you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. And uh, I want to take just a few moments, and uh, I know it is safe to say that uh, each and every one of you have prayer concerns on your heart and your mind this morning. And once again, I want to encourage you that uh, that if you would, just email your prayer concerns to us, and I, and I promise you that we'll remain faithful to uh, to lifting your cares and concerns up to uh, up to the Lord. And you can just email them in at soldierbay at atmc.net. We got a, uh, uh, I, I just really want to stop and speak to everybody that I see uh, coming in, but we want to uh, to go ahead and, uh, and, and get started. And uh, I see your comments and what some of you referred to about the, uh, the audio and and Brian is diligently working right now just to improve that. So I just ask you to maybe pray right now for the technology. But it's looking like everything is okay on our end. And uh, so if you would, I just want to turn our attention uh, to, our, to our prayer concerns this morning. And just want to share with you that, uh, that I spoke to Pastor Charlie on Friday. And uh, he's doing okay. Uh, he is blessed and he is grateful for the prayers uh, from each and every one of you. Um, but uh, he's still having some issues with pain. And uh, so he is uh, some, taking some medicine for that. And uh, he'll have an appointment on July 3rd uh, just to make sure that everything is okay with the, with the tumor that they place their attention on for this procedure. And if everything is well there, they'll be scheduling the uh, the second procedure on the other tumor in his kidney uh, a little bit later on. But he wanted me. Uh, he shared with me and wanted me to thank you for your for your prayers and attention to the concerns with him and Miss Alice and the family. So thank you on his behalf. Um, continue to remember those that are in nursing homes and are inpatients in our hospital. Remember to pray for our, our law enforcement, our first responders. Fire, EMS, 911, telecommunicators. And remember to pray for our health care workers that are continuing on the front lines uh, dealing with this pandemic. And once again, I invite you, as we spent time last Sunday morning, we spent time in prayer for our nation. Please continue to pray for our nation, for the healing of our land. For people to, to turn from their wicked ways, to repent, and to unite. And like I've always said, and I'll continue to say as long as I can draw breath, the answer, the answer to this nation is Jesus Christ. That is the answer. I would like to take just a, a personal moment, if I, if I could, and, and would. I'm going to pause for just a second and kind of check in with Brian and see if everything's okay. Okay. We're just going to keep, we're just going to keep plowing along. I'm, I'm, I'm truly uh, not going to get distracted by this this morning. I know it's the, uh, uh, I know it's the devil. He wants to get in this message today, and uh, I, I'm not going to allow him. I'm just not going to allow him this morning. But uh, if, if y'all remember, I just desiring your prayers for uh, for my family. Uh, some of you remember and uh, reached out to me, and a lot of you have been praying. But you remember around May 14th that my dad. 
dead sister, uh, Aunt Jeanette Sasson, uh, passed away. And we had her services. And this past Friday morning, one of her daughters, Rhonda, Rhonda Sapston, went home to be with the Lord. And uh, so if you would, I, I would just appreciate, appreciate your prayers uh, for my family, uh, not only in the coming days, but the coming hours, and minutes and seconds. I have her funeral to, uh, to preach on Tuesday. And uh, just, uh, you know, just, uh, just a rough time right now. But our God is faithful. He is not faltered, and he still sits on the throne. And also, I know each and every one of you have got cares and concerns. Some of you watching, I know for a fact, have got procedures coming up. Some of you have surgery coming up. Some of your family members right now are sick in the hospital, in the nursing home. Some of you are at home healing from procedures. So I know this morning, there's a lot on our mind. And a lot that can consume us. But I just invite you right now. You know the Bible says, cast all your care on him. For he cares for you. So will you join me right now? And just as soon as I pray, we're going to have a worship song. Brother Jason Covey is singing, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And we'll meditate and worship God during that time of the song. Would you please join me at this time for prayer? Heavenly Father, we pause right now just once again thanking you for this beautiful day that you've made and allowing us to be a part of. And God, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how, asking for your blessings upon this time. Lord, I am not concentrating. I'm not concentrating on how the devil's gotten into the technology. But I believe it may be static. It may be some little uh, hiccups along the way. But God, right now, I pray that you just move in a mighty way, in the only way that you can, and allow the people to hear for the message of the moment. Father God, I pray this morning that I'm obedient with your message. And God, I pray for uh, each and every concern on each and everybody's mind right now that's being lifted up, Father, by individuals. And we come together during this time, knowing that you hear our prayers. God, you're faithful when we cry out. That you hear. Not only do you hear, but you respond. And God, I pray as you respond, knowing that you're all knowing, knowing that you're all present, and knowing that your will will be done. And God, that is our prayer this morning, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, while your will is being done, as we come to you, as we stand, as we bow, as we serve, Father, I pray for our cooperation with your spirit. God, do right now in our lives only what you can do. God, forgive us of our sins. Forgive me of my sins. And be with us now and strengthen us and equip us, Father, to hear what thus saith the Lord. God, we love you and we thank you. And now bless us now with this song as we worship you. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. I was standing by my window on one cold and cloudy day when I saw that hers come rolling for to carry my mother away. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Well, I told the undertaker, undertaker, please 
drive slow for that body that you are hauling. Lord, I hate to see her go. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. I will follow close behind her Try to hold up and be brave But I could not hide my sorrows When they laid her in that grave Will the circle be unbroken By and by, Lord, by and by there's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Went back home, Lord, the home's lonesome Miss my mother, she was gone All my brothers, sisters crying What a home so sad and alone Will the circle be unbroken by and by? a better home waiting in the sky Lord in the sky will the circle be unbroken by and by Lord by and by there's a better home waiting in the sky In the sky, Lord, in the sky. Amen. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. What a blessing. I want to pause just for a moment while you were viewing the uh, and listening and praising God. Uh, we 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 did a, a little change on something, and we just want to make sure that uh, that you can hear us and that maybe the popping or the static. Um, has gone away. So uh, I'm just going to keep talking for just a moment and just make sure that that has, uh, has kind of taken uh, care of itself. So, um, but anyway, uh, we have this morning, and I've invited you to turn with me, please, to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm, I'm, getting, a, I'm getting a look here for a moment, so we're going to try something. Okay, uh, we're now on the third microphone for the morning, and we want to check, make sure, uh, every, thank you for your patience. Um, I'm just, I'm just sitting on go, and, and, and can't wait to, uh, to, to share with you this morning, uh, so we're going to just uh, give it just a second to make sure everything's okay, and, uh, and just kind of go from there. Man, God bless you. Stay with me, please. Please don't leave. Stay right with me because uh, I truly believe we're going to hear a word from God this morning. And, um, and I'm waiting for somebody to tell me to just start preaching is what I'm waiting on.
I reckon I, I, reckon I could just start making funny faces or, or something like that, maybe. I don't know. Um, all right. So you kind of keep going. Keep trying it. Just go from there. What do you say, everybody? One more thing. We're going to try one more thing. Jesus says, look at the words now. He 
says, most assuredly, I say to you. In other words, he is, he is saying, hey, hey y'all, listen. Listen carefully to what I'm getting ready to say. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when a teacher says, y'all calm down, y'all sit down, y'all gather around and listen. I've got, I've got a very important message to say. In other words, Jesus is saying, listen close to my words. Now, immediately, we want to launch out in this text and call this text a parable. We all know what a parable is. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Heavenly meaning. The Gospel of John in chapter 10, uh, in, in, in 1 through these verses, and we're going to look at 1 through 10 this morning and tonight, this is not a parable from Jesus Christ. It is, as far as the literary, the, not the literal, but the literary background of this text, it is an allegory. And what that simply means is that every comment, every statement supports the main idea of what Jesus is talking about. You all okay? Now, now watch this. What is going on in these verses? Well, to understand why Jesus says, most assuredly, I say to you, most hey, hey, y'all, listen to what I'm getting ready to say. Jesus gets their attention. But why does he get their attention? To get why he got their attention, we have to look at chapter 9. Well, we're not going to take the time to read the chapter 9 this morning, but I invite you to read chapter 9 it's in its entirety. What has happened here? Jesus, let me tell you real quick, you ready? Jesus has, um, has healed a blind beggar. He tells the blind beggar, this is one of the two times that the scripture tells us that Jesus took mud and he spit in it and he made a salve to put over the blind man's eyes. Uh, uh, this is a, this is a, the, the background of spit is actually, there, there, there are documented cases where actual spit or saliva had medicinal purposes during these times. Now Jesus spits in clay, puts it over the guy's eyes, and he, the, 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 he, and he tells him, he says, go to the pool of Salaam and, 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 and wash. And immediately, this is a short version, and, he, and, and, and the, the blind beggar does it, and he comes out of the pool, and he sees. Well, when he sees, when he starts seeing, guess what he starts doing? He tells somebody, he tells somebody what Jesus has done for him. That's a message in itself. He tells somebody, and so the people take the blind beggar, the blind beggar, because they don't believe him. And the fact that it is that it's not that they don't believe that he can see, they think he was never actually blind. Now remember that. So they take him to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees start interrogating this man. Stay with me now. They start interrogating this man. And, and, and the Pharisees, and just in case you maybe you're hearing this for the first time, this is the religious group, this is the legalist group. These are the people that didn't believe Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah. And they had an issue of Jesus healing this man because Jesus did it on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees actually said, there's no man of God that would have done this on the Sabbath. And so they talked to the man, and, and they end up believing that the man was not actually blind. So the Pharisee says, I'll tell you what you do, go get his parents. Well, they go and get his parents, and they bring the parents to the interrogation. And the parents make these comments. They say three statements. That is our son. He was born blind. But who actually healed him, we do not know. And I tell you what, Pharisees, he is of age, ask him. In other words, they were saying, we are scared to be honest with you and to answer you. So what I want you to do is being he is of age, you need to talk to him. And what they were scared of at that time, that anybody that thought Jesus was the Messiah, they were going to be exiled out of the synagogue. So they look at the man and they start interrogating him. They start interrogating him one more time. And they ask him, who did this? Was the man that did this a sinner because he healed on the Sabbath? And then one of the most one of my most favorite verses in the Bible is what this blind beggar says about Jesus. And he says, and I quote. I do not know if he is a sinner or not. I do not know. But one thing I do know, 
that I was blind, but now I see. Say amen right there. And that should be the testimony of every Christian at this time. That there was a time in our life that we were blind, but now we see. And then immediately, immediately something happened. And in verse 934, the Bible says, the answer is at the end. You were completely born in sin. And are you teaching us? And they cast him out. And what that simply means is they kicked him out of the church. And then something begins to happen here. Something begins to happen here. And then we find that Jesus has found out about the man being exiled. He's found out about the man being exiled. And in verse 1 of chapter 10, they started a conversation with him in 940, 41. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So ten picks up, ten one picks up, where nine seems to come to an end. And now we have the words of John 10, 1 through 10. And the Bible says, more specifically, Jesus says, Most assuredly I say to you, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way. The same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Did you get that? To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Pay attention. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Don't miss that. And Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Now don't miss that either. In verse 7, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I, now notice a second time, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Thank you, God, this morning for your word. I want you to understand a lot of times this passage of Scripture is approached as a parable. It's also approached that Jesus is talking about a place called heaven. Now, heaven is an actual real place, and heaven is a place that the, 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 the blood-bought, born-again uh, believer will be at one day, eternally, eternally, eter for eternity, eternally with the Father. That's not easy to say. But it is this passage of Scripture is not a parable about a place. This passage of Scripture is about a position of people, and it's about a position of what's called salvation. There's two things we're going to look at this morning. And I want us to look at this morning the sheepfold. And I want us to look at the sheep. The background that you see behind me is an actual sheepfold in Israel. And if you look right around here, you see this area that is called the door. That is called the gate. This morning, this sermon is about that location. And that location is protected is a place of security, is a place of safety that Jesus Christ himself stands at for you and me. I want us to look at the sheepfold this morning. Now look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. We're only going to look at verse 1 and verse 2. And, and can I say this on a side note? Please join us tonight at 6 o'clock, please, for the remainder of this sermon. I can't flat wait to share with you tonight the, 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 the finish, this message of Jesus saying, I am the door. Now look what he says. He says, most assuredly, verse 1, he says, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door. Jesus immediately takes the listener and us, the readers, to a place called a sheepfold. <coughs> now remember, this sermon grew out of, this sermon uh, gave, well, this sermon started 
because of the confrontation of Jesus and the Pharisees. It also started from the excommunication of the blind beggar out of the synagogue. Jesus had been speaking to these people. He had been talking to them about him being the bread of life. He had been talking to them about him being the light in the darkness. And they, and they just simply remember they didn't get it. But Jesus moves to something that they can get. Everybody during this time knew what a shepherd was. They knew what sheep were. And they knew the place called the sheepfold. It was, it, 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 Jesus was always, when you study his teachings, when you study his saying in his sermons, he was brilliant at starting a conversation so the person listening could relate to it. And certain man, there's a message in there for us right now this morning. Before you listen to me a second, it is vital to know and to understand before you can speak to someone about Jesus Christ and their relationship, it is important to relate to them first. It's like the old saying, I don't know how, I don't care how much somebody knows until I know how much somebody cares. And so we need to make sure that we are relating to people, that we're listening to people about their cares and their concerns and the hurt that's going on in their life. And once that is done, then, sir, ma'am, you can share your story with them. People don't want to hear until they know that they've been heard. Don't forget that. It's just like up here uh, in Ash, North Carolina. It's very simple to start an illustration or to start a sermon about farming. If we were on the coast, we could talk about fishers, and we could talk when Jesus was at the Sea of Galilee. He talked about fishing and boats and storms and things of that nature. And here, once again, he uses a common illustration about something that he thought they would know something about. But what's interesting to know is this. What's interesting to know is this, that in these times, shepherds, the people that tended to the sheep, that tended to the flocks, they weren't the only ones referred to as shepherds. Understand, during this day and time, anybody that was a religious figure or a political figure was referred to as a shepherd. It, it sounds very strange, but it would be it would be just like us today saying that the office of our governor is the shepherd of the people of North Carolina. The office of the president of the United States is our shepherd of the United States. We don't talk like that. We don't think like that. We don't call those positions of power and, 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 and politics shepherds today. But that's who exactly Jesus was talking about in this allegory of the scripture. Anybody that was political or spiritual leaders to the people were referred to as shepherds. So Jesus takes the shepherds, he takes the shepherds, and he drops them off at the sheepfold. Now understand this about the sheepfold. It is a place of safety and it's a place of security. And he thought that everybody that was listening could relate. But they couldn't. As you see in the picture behind me, some of you have seen sheep poles before. A lot of times it's a, it's a circle. It's stones that have been built up for the protection of the sheep. Now, you know, listen a minute. Uh, it can be circle. It can be four walls. And, and in the four walls or somewhere in the break of the, uh, somewhere in the, break of the wall, there's an opening. And it's referred to the gate. And that's where the shepherd would be or the porter would be. Jesus talks about the porter or the gatekeeper would be there. It's a place that the sheep would go. Listen, it's a place that the sheep would go during the night. And it's also a place they would go during the day. Shepherds would carry sheep fold when it was extremely hot. They would let them out in the mornings, uh, out in the pastures to eat the green grass. Then they'd bring them in so they could rest during the day, during the heat. And that evening when the sun went down and it cooled off, they'd let them back out. But at night, they'd bring them back into the sheepfold. Now watch this also. Sheepfolds that were in the community, don't miss this. Sheepfolds that were in the community, shepherds would share the sheepfolds. You could have a shepherd over here with a sheep. You could have a shepherd over here with a sheep and a shepherd over here with a sheep. But they would share the exact same sheepfold. And so all of these shepherds would bring their sheep into this fold for the safety, for the protection, for the security. And the porter or one of the shepherds would be at the gate. And that's why Jesus talks about that when the shepherds come, the sheep know his voice. It's also 
also been documented and in studying that not only does the shepherd know the sheep, but that the sheep know the shepherd. They don't answer. They don't follow just to anybody. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. And Jesus brings us up and he talks about this because of the sheep commingling from the different flocks of each individual shepherd. And it's very safe to say that the shepherd take care of the sheep. Amen? The shepherd takes care of the sheep. That's why in Psalm 23, verse 2, the Bible says, the psalmist says, David says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. The, 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 anytime, listen to me just very, very quickly here. Just a little side note. Anytime you study sheep, many, many of authors will say that sheep are stupid animals. Those are the words that you read. But I'm not one to call something or somebody stupid. But I will word it this way. Sheep are animals that have to be led. They have to be led. And they get scared and they get frightened over the least little thing. And when, the, when David said that the shepherd leads me beside the still waters, it's because the sheep will not go to water and drink from a stream or drink from a brook that is flowing very rapidly because of the noise and the water going over the rocks. The, the sheep are too scared to get near it. So what the shepherd would do is he would literally go upstream sometimes and lay his body across the stream and slow the water down so when it got to the sheep, they wouldn't be scared and they could drink without fear and they could drink without noise. Some translations say that he leads me beside the quiet waters. And that's what our shepherd named Jesus Christ does for you. Have you thought about maybe the times that our Lord, have you thought about maybe the times that our Lord has come into our life and went upstream of our life and has laid his body down and in the waters to slow down and to calm down and to bring down the noise of the things that are coming in our life. Somebody say amen. Think about that for a moment. What the shepherd does for us. And he leaves. He leaves the sheepfold. And he puts our attention on the shepherd. But there's two shepherds here that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the false shepherd. And then he talks about the true shepherd. Note what he says about the false shepherd. Look, look what he says. He says, but climbs up some other way. In other words, listen. In other words, the false shepherds don't go in through the door. Now, now, now can I say something real quick? You may think what I'm getting ready to say, everything that I'm getting ready to say is stating the actual obvious. But sir, ma'am, it's important for us to hear this message this morning. For what, the, for what thus saith the Lord. He says some, but climbs up some other way. And then he identifies them and he calls them for what they are. He says, but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. The false shepherds. They are the religionists. They are the legalists. They are the false prophets. They are the false preachers. They are the false teachers. Sir, ma'am, I'm going to share with you right now what Jesus Christ was talking about and who Jesus Christ was talking about was the legalist. He was talking about those individuals that didn't believe that he was the Son of God and the Messiah that came to save the world. He says, in other words, they're not coming through the door. Listen, he says they're not coming. Listen, he says they're not coming in the acceptable way. I want you to know and to understand that I truly believe as a servant of God, as a born-again believer, I certainly believe that it stands in the shadows of every Old Testament verse is the forthcoming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Jesus came the acceptable way. He came the right way. He came the only way. And that way is through God's way. Everything that God said that the prophets prophesied is how Jesus arrived on this earth. He came the acceptable way. 
he came as the door. Uh, think about something for a moment. I, I just want to share with you real quick. If you ever come to my house, if you ever come to my house and you come inside, do me a favor. Use the door. Use the door. I, I don't want you coming into my house if you're going to climb through a window. I don't want you coming to my house if you're gonna if you're gonna bust the window out and climb in. I don't want you coming into my house if you're gonna take a saw and, and cut a new way to get in my house. I want you to use the door because that's the acceptable way of coming into my house, and it's the acceptable way I hope and pray of coming into your house. Now listen to me real quickly. When you study what Jesus says, when He says some other way, now listen to me. And I'm trying to close. Somebody right then just said amen in their house. But listen, when Jesus says some other way, the Greek translation of that phrase talks about a point of origin. It talks about a point of origin. And what that means is he's referring to, yes, some other way, from some other direction, from some other source, from some other position, or some other road. But listen to me, if you haven't heard anything else that I've said, and you block me out for the rest of what I'm going to say, hear this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. It's, 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 it's interesting to look at Jesus calling the false prophets a thief. It's interesting that he calls them a robber. I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but a thief is an individual that only takes something that doesn't belong to them. That is a that is a thief. The Greek word for the word thief is <coughs> is kleptos. Kleptos is where we get our word kleptomaniac. The Greek word for thief is 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 kleptos. The Greek word for robber is lastes. Lastes. A robber is different from a thief. Now watch this. A thief only takes something that is not there. But a robber does something different. A robber will cause destruction. A robber will cause harm. A robber will cause, uh, will, will, will devour or destroy anything that's in the place or in the way of getting what they come to get. That is the difference between a thief and a robber. The actual word, klesthes, is the word that the gospel writers used, the Greek word that the gospel writers used for Judas when they called him a thief. Lastes is the word that the gospel writers used when they referred to Barabbas, the man that was freed instead of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you thought about it or not, but you can't get much lower calling somebody a Judas and calling somebody of Barabbas. But a thief is dishonest. It is a deceiver. They'll use any way, any method. Listen, they'll use any method to get into the sheepfold. Just like a robber. He's going to use violence. He's going to come in some other way to get the sheep. It's interesting to note that they have to use some other way not to care for the sheep, but to get the sheep away from the true shepherd. Can I ask you a question right now? Who does that sound like to you right now? Who does that sound like? A deceiver. A deceptor. Someone that would devour anybody, anything, to get their way. I don't know about you, but I think it speaks very plainly and very clearly about Satan himself. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, listen, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, Paul said to the church at Corinth, For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into the angel of light. Jesus said twice, Jesus said, 
I am the door. He's, he didn't come to deceive. He didn't come to devour. But he came to deliver. And he came to redeem. The blind beggar had gained his sight to be able to see Jesus for who he truly was. But yet the religious fanatics, the Pharisees, were actually the ones who were truly blind. And what blinded them, what blinded them was their pride. Their pride. And I truly believe, just like I pray almost, I'll, somewhere in my prayers, you will always hear me thank God for this day, for his creation, and allowing us to be a part of this day, for life and for breath. And the reason I pray that is very simple, because I truly believe that God is the supreme being and has all authority over everybody and everything. He is a sovereign God. He is an all-knowing God. And if He is who the Bible says He is, and He is who I believe He is, then He has the He has the authority to create the way that I am to believe. And that way is Jesus Christ. The only way. The door and the gate. And I have a question in closing. Is he your door this morning? If he isn't, if you're being deceived, if you're being devoured by the false shepherd that comes in from some other way, sir, ma'am, you're going to go down a path of destruction. You're going to end up in a place called hell. And what is sadder than that is you're going to be eternally separated from God Almighty. We're getting ready to hear a hymn of meditation. I ask you, prayer warriors, I ask you to start praying now. That if we have not, if you find yourself this morning that have not gone through the door of Jesus Christ, that you'll do that this morning. Repent. Tell God you're sorry for your sins. And by faith, believe and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, have your will and way this time in our life. Father, I pray that all distractions are removed, the noise level comes down right where these people are today, in their home, at their place of employment, in their car. Father, right now, I pray that you get serious with us and we get serious with you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and everybody said, Amen.
take your Aunt Sue and Miss Faye. Uh, during the instrumental, I was uh, kind of listening back to uh, what it sounds like y'all heard on your end. And we apologize profusely. Uh, I don't want you to think we're ignoring it, but just so you know, that everything in here sounds crystal clear. But we do know that there's an issue. So thank you for being patient with us today. And something told me today that the devil was going to do everything he could to keep this message from going out. But as I mentioned this morning during a prayer time, we have the victory. Because as a believer, we don't pray for victory, but we pray from victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, and God bless you. And I would just love to invite you. Maybe by then we'll have everything worked out. Maybe tonight I'll preach this morning's message over again and just keep going with tonight's message. Amen. You didn't say amen to that, did you? Anyway, thank you. Hope you have a wonderful day. I love you in the Lord. God bless.